Hi everybody. So this video is going to take you through uh, the project Digital Landscape. So just to show you a sample, here is a sample of the project and just to describe what you have here, it has the illusion of a sense of depth because it uses what they call atmospheric perspective where things that appear to be in front of you are dark and richer in color and as things go farther away they get lighter in color. So you can see that these mountains, as they go in the, the distance, they get dark, uh, lighter and lighter. Um, as well as the trees. See, the trees in the foreground are bigger, and then as they get farther away, they're smaller and smaller. So that, that creates more of the illusion. So that's what we're going to be trying to do. Um, also in the picture, besides the five mountain ranges and the trees, there's also a moon or a sun, depending on how you're looking at this. Um, there's also a gradient in the background as well as some clouds. So I'm going to take you through all of these uh, steps. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to go to a new project. And we're going to call this new project, let's call it landscape. Just so when we save it, we can, uh, we can find it easier just by having that nice title to it. We're going to make the width 18 inches. We're going to make the height 12 inches and make sure that you're changing it if it's not set already to that the inches not the pixels and the dpi the dots per inch you want to set at 72 background contents white and hit create so this is your image that you're going to be working with i'm going to zoom excuse me i'm going to zoom out a little bit so hit the control button and the minus sign on your keyboard and what that'll do is that'll zoom it out a little bit to allow some space around the outside of your picture plane. You can also do this if you hit the zoom tool and you have the plus and the minus. So the minus will zoom out, the plus will zoom in. But like I said, there's a, a shortcut, control plus, it's this next to the zero on the top of your keyboard. You zoom out, zoom in. So like I said, you just want some space around the outside for the next step. So what we're going to do is we are going to add those mountains, those layers of mountains. So we're going to go with lines from the bottom coming up. And so we're going to make a series of shapes that are going to get bigger and bigger and more towards the top. So we're going to start by making a new layer by hitting the new layer button down on the bottom of your layers window and we're going to rename this. We're going to call this Mountain 1. And we're going to use the lasso tool. Make sure you're using the regular lasso tool right here. If you hold down your, uh, your click right on top of that tool, that'll take you through the three different ones. And we just want the plain one, lasso select. We are now going to pick a series of colors. Okay, so you're going to pick a family of color by clicking on this foreground color picker right on the bottom. It's the top of the two squares. And you're going to pick a family of color. So if you want to have like orange, orangey browns for your landscape, if you want greens for your landscape, this is where you're going to pick them. So uh, let's go with green this time. I'll pick like a nice green. Now, when you do select your colors, you're going to be selecting a series of various shades and tints. You're going to start off really dark and then travel on a diagonal, like I'm illustrating, bottom right to top left, you're going to pick your colors through here. So we're going to start off really dark for our first one. Say OK. And we're going to draw our line using the lasso tool. And the line, is, you know, you think about mountains and you think about a landscape. You can have valleys and mountains, that kind of thing. Now, I'm going around the outside of the picture plane because it really makes no difference what happens around in this black area. What's, what's going to be used is this area right here. So you don't have to be too concerned with what goes on outside the picture plane because whatever is going to have color is going to be inside the picture plane. I'm going to use the paint bucket tool now. And if you can't find the paint bucket tool, it shares a button with the gradient tool. So we're on paint bucket. We have the correct color. We're on the correct layer and we dump the color in. Hit command D and it'll get rid of that selection. It'll get rid of the, the ants, the marching ants around there. 
All right, so that's number one. We're going to continue this process until they are all completed. New layer. We're going to have five mountains all together. Mountain two. Go with a new direction, and you don't have to be parallel with the other shape you just made. And it's okay if it drops down behind it, not a problem. Now this new color, we're going to come up a bit, and you can see the two colors here. This was the old color, this is the new one you picked. Say okay. Paint bucket, dump it in. Now you can see that Mountain 2 should be in behind Mountain 1. You could do that just by dragging the layer just like that. Okay. So we're going to keep going. New layer. Call this one Mountain 3. color. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that, so I'm going to try that again. Color. Now you can see I'm kind of doing these steps sort of in different order, meaning, you know, I made the new layer and now I'm switching it immediately. And need to get those things done. Last one. Okay, new layer. switch the order. Okay, so that's how you do the mountains. Okay, after you made your mountains, uh, double check, make sure you have mountain one, two, three, four, five, and you have a background, um, and you're very happy with it. And you can make changes to this pretty much at any time because it's always going to be a separate layer, but you're better off doing it earlier rather than doing it after you've done a lot of other steps. So should be pretty happy with the way this looks right now. So we're going to put a gradient in the background, and this gradient is going to represent the sky. Now it's up to you if you want to double click on the background um, title and call it sky. You can certainly do that. And we're going to be applying a gradient. So if you recall, the gradient, uh, it shares a button with the paint bucket tool. So you're going to stay on the gradient tool. Up on top you see a swatch, and the swatch has um, you know, colors that you can change. So if you click on that swatch, you can change the colors of this uh, band of a gradient if you want by clicking on the squares underneath. So if you wanted to change this orange to, let's say, wanted to change it to like a blue, and change this color if you want to. purple, you can go with anything you want for the sky. And you can, I encourage you to try out different things. Well, I kind of enjoyed the color I had it earlier. I'm going to keep that. That looks kind of neat. So you're in the sky layer, and now you're going to just start dragging this around and kind of figure out what kind of sky you want this to look like. And if you change the direction of your line as you drag it and the length of your line, that's going to change the look of that gradient. You can try also um, radial. Let's see, just like that. If you reverse it, it'll reverse the colors. So you can try all sorts of things. Now I found something I liked earlier. Let's see, I just had it before. I 
that's nice. I think I might want, yeah, I think that's the one. That's the ticket. So if this is the one that you want, then you're done with that sky. We're also going to add, while we're at it, we're going to add a, um, a moon or a sun, depending on how you look at it, but it's just going to be a white circle somewhere in your sky. So you're going to make a new layer, and this is going to be underneath all the mountains. So make sure that the this, this new layer, and I'm going to call it moon, and make sure that that layer is in between the sky and mountain five. Now we are going to use white as our foreground color. So whatever color in the spectrum you're at, you're going to bring your circle up into that top left-hand corner. That's going to give you white. And we're going to be using this rectangle select or ellipse select. Uh, it's the select tool. So make sure you're on ellipse. Make sure that that's a circle. And we're going to be making a circle. Now to keep it from having that freedom of being whatever ellipse it wants, it's going to lock in a proportion. If you hold down the shift button on your keyboard, you can see it kind of locks in that perfect proportional circle. So you can kind of figure out how big you want this to be. And then you're going to dump, using the paint bucket tool, you're going to dump white into that shape. Sorry, I'm on the gradient tool still. There we go. Okay. So you can see now it looks like it's setting in the sun. And you can also move it around, figure out where you want it to be. I think I'm just going to leave it up in here, and I think I'm going to have it covered um, by the last mountain a little bit. Okay. Um, to make it a little more realistic, what I would recommend is lowering the opacity. And to do that, you go to the moon layer, make sure that that's active. And up on top here, you have opacity. You hit that arrow, and you can drag it down. I find that anywhere between 40 and 50 makes it look nice. And you can see it looks a little bit, it doesn't look so stark. It's a little more realistic. All right, so that is what you should have so far. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more realism to this sky. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer and put clouds as a filter in that layer. So the location of this new layer should be between the sky and the moon. Okay, should be the only thing that's below this new layer you're making is the sky. So make sure it is situated right above the background or the sky. And I'm going to rename this layer clouds. Now, what works best for this is if the clouds were, um, this layer was black and white. <clears throat> so go to your color picker down below where those two squares are. And down below, you're going to see a little D in between the two, um, the two squares. If you click it, it'll automatically go to black and white. Okay, so it's fine just like that. You're now going to go to filter. Go to render and go to clouds. Now you'll see that the layer will create this haze on top of the sky. So you don't have this, um, you know, you, you don't really see the colors anymore. But you can absolutely lower the opacity of this layer, the cloud layer, the same way as we did the moon before. So if you start dragging it down, you can start to see your colors come back and it lightens up the look of the clouds. So again, you know, depending on how you want this to look, you can set that up any way you want, okay? So this next step is going to show you how to actually make a brush into a shape of um, a desired object, okay? And in our case, it's going to be trees. So what we're going to have is we're going to be using a brush, and the brush is going to be uh, of a tree. So you're going to kind of not even use it as a brush where you're dragging strokes along. You're actually going to use it almost as a stamp, okay? So let's make our uh, brush. You're going to be going to uh, Google, and you just do a Google search, and you're going to look around for some trees. Now, I just happen to be looking for pine trees. It's okay if you find an image that has a bunch of different 
trees on it as long as you have one or two that you definitely want to use um, some students you may decide to pick um, you know a couple of different ones not that not that you necessarily have to um, but you know you just want to find one make sure that the quality is pretty good meaning you don't want it really really super small but you don't want it super big uh, watch out for the watermark some of these images have these things called watermarks which are these really light sort of prints on the uh, like going through the picture you want to avoid those you want to find nice clean ones so if you start doing a search your best bet is to go to tree and it could be a oak tree or maple tree whatever tree you want but write the word silhouette so you get this black and white image because that's what we're going to be working with so I found one earlier really like this one. You can see that the quality is pretty good. It's a thousand, you know, eleven hundred by seven fifty. And we're going to open it up, uh, open image in a new tab by right clicking. So that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image. All right, now I'm just saving it in onto the desktop right now. Okay. Now, I'm going to open it up in Photoshop, uh, in Fo Fo Photopia. So I'm going to go to open, and it's at this point I'm going to find it. Okay. Um, I'm going to single out one of these trees. I just want one of these images to be on my brush. So who's going to be the lucky one? Let's say that this one is the lucky one. So you want to get like marching ants around it. So you're probably better off using a tool like the lasso tool. And if you need to zoom in, you go ahead and zoom in if they're too close together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy. And then I'm going to paste. So what it did is it made it into a separate layer. I now am going to make the background invisible so it just singles out that one single tree. Now I'm going to, I have to define it as a brush. I go to File, oh, no, nope. I go to Edit, Define New, Brush. Okay. There's not much you need to do, and it just says brush is added. So where can you locate the brush? Well, let me go to the landscape picture. And if you go to the brush tool, and you see your options up in here. So if you want to see your brushes, you can click on this little swatch right here. And over here are the presets, Okay, right down here. And the very last one right here should be your brush. There it is, okay? So don't take for granted, don't just start throwing these trees on here now. You wanna go start with mountain one and you are gonna be putting, placing some trees into this part of the picture. Now again, don't take for granted the size. The size should be large, okay? Not too large, not too small, but these are gonna be the largest trees. Why? Because they're the closest to you. You also want to make sure you pick the correct color to, to brush with. So I'm going to go to the foreground color here, and I'm going to pick, if you go outside of this field into your picture and you click, it's going to sample that color for you right there. Okay, And what you're going to do is just click, and you can see that your tree is going to show up there and by making them different size you know slightly different sizes and as I said I'm just going to be using one tree okay and that's plenty so I put it into that one layer uh, now I'm going to go to mountain two I'm going to sample that new color right there and I'm going to put the trees here. Now again, don't take it for granted. Make sure you're on the correct layer, Mountain 2. So these trees are going to be smaller because they're farther away. So I can use the brackets next to the P. And I'm going to go with a series of trees here. And you can have them overlapping each other. changing the size slightly. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Mountain 3 and do the same process. Again, they're going to get smaller. Every time you go back in the picture, you're not really going back, you're getting smaller. 
So to create the illusion of this depth, these are going to be smaller than whatever that is. Okay. And now I go to mountain four, sample the color. I don't think I'd put any trees in the last, last layer. That's just me. Like in Mountain 5, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Okay, these are going to be even smaller. It's fun. You can kind of just, you know, play the creator of this world and make as many trees as you want. All right. So that really enhances the look of it by having the trees really, really close, being look, looking really close, being larger, and then getting smaller and smaller. It, it enhances that whole look of the, the sense of depth. Now, um, to save it, file, save as PSD. And then you're gonna, it's going to show up in your, um, in your folder. So you just want to make sure that you have this saved. Oops, it's opening up in GIMP, which is a different program. Um, but anyway, you're going to be saving it into a certain file. A PSD, you can open it up in Photoshop as well. Um, so, But when you are ready to submit it, you save it as a JPEG. Okay. So to do that, you might want to export as, and you can export as JPEG but that'll be way later, okay? So that is the project in a nutshell. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys have fun with it. You can try out different kinds of things. Um, you can certainly try out different brushes. Um, you can certainly, if you wanted to create a couple of different brushes, you can, I can go back to the background layer and I can select one of these other trees and I can copy and paste it and make the other one invisible and then I can use this and make this as a brush same way edit define new brush and so then if I go back to my brushes you can see that my brush is you should you will be able to see another tree so again if I wanted to add some more trees different types of trees I can certainly do that all right. Have fun. Enjoy. Have a good one. And you know how to get in touch with me if you have any questions.